and welcome back to Megan Haskell's Book Club. We are continuing the uh, journey through Aetherbound, book one of the Rise of Lilith series. Um, today, we're moving on to chapter nine. Um, but I do want to take a quick moment and let you all know that if you're watching this live when it airs chapter by chapter, um, next week, book two, The Rise of Lilith, book two called Aether Crossed, which is right there, is launching on all of the major ebook platforms. So if you're interested in, uh, if you've already finished reading Aetherbound on your own and you're interested in continuing the story, you can grab that book now, pre-order it now, and it will be automatically downloaded to your device on Tuesday, November 7th. So that is the official launch date for Aether Crossed, book two of the Rise of Lilith series. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to continue our reading of um, Aetherbound, book one, chapter nine. Once I get it open. Here we go. Aetherbound, chapter nine. 911, what's your emergency? The Laguna Beach police dispatcher answered the phone with polite authority. I need to report a missing person. Maybe. Or a boat wreck. I'm not sure, I replied. I honestly didn't know what to say. I'd never called 911 before. But it had been hours since I woke up and left the first message on Ezra's phone. He still hadn't called back or checked in. No word. Nothing. Did you witness a boat accident? The woman asked. I could hear her fingers tapping away on the computer keyboard as she spoke. No, my, my brother went out for an ocean swim, but this freak storm blew in and I can't get a hold of him. Ma'am, this line is for emergencies only. Not being able to reach your brother does not qualify. Listen, he's a paraplegic training for a paratriathlon. His girlfriend took him out on her boat and I can't get a hold of them. They're probably out of range, ma'am. I'm sure he'll return your call when he can. But the storm... Ma'am, there's a small craft advisory in place, and we've had no reports of any boats in danger. It's highly localized. I'm certain your brother is fine and will return your call shortly. I suggest you wait for his call. For now, this line needs to stay clear for actual emergencies. The woman's tone had shifted from polite to stern. Thanks for nothing, I hung up. Why would no one believe me? I couldn't be the only one worried about this freak storm. She had admitted it was real. I wasn't crazy. Ezra was in trouble. I could feel it. No boats in danger. Maybe that was a good sign. Maybe they were outside the storm front, had gone down to San Diego or something. It was only a little over an hour drive, especially if they'd left early. A thunderous boom shook my entire building, as if mocking my hope. To say I was distracted that night would be the understatement of the year. It was a Wednesday, which meant Silas's band was back on stage and the locals thronged. A lot of folks came for the vibe. We even had a few businessy types who brought clients or out-of-towners for an after-work drink. It was busy, but not busy enough to keep me distracted. Or maybe I was already too distracted to begin with. What the hell, Lil? Ty demanded when I knocked over a shaker full of blue Hawaiian. It spilled across the counter, soaking Ty's work area and dripping off the edge onto the floor. Sorry, I mumbled as I struggled to collect the ice and wipe up the mess. What's wrong with you tonight? I shook my head. Nothing, never mind. It won't happen again. I had to get my head on straight, but Ezra still hadn't called. The storm had raged for about an hour before finally calming. It cleared out almost as quickly as it had rolled in leaving puddles the size of small lakes glinting beneath sunny skies. And now it was all anyone could talk about. I got caught outside in that shit, one 30-something hipster with a waxed mustache and suspenders announced. Given the amount of grease that had to be holding the shape of his facial hair, I figured the rain must have just rolled right off of him. I heard the thunder, but I was stuck in my office. No windows. I missed the whole show, the woman he was with replied. You should have seen the waves. They had to have been at least 10-foot swells, maybe 15. 
A glass slipped from my hand, falling to the floor with a crash. You okay, hon? Virginia asked, bending over to help me clean up the shattered glass. Two accidents in as many minutes. It might be a record. I pressed my eyelids closed. Ezra may have been out there. I could barely breathe the words out. Out where? On the water. He was supposed to go for an ocean training swim with his new girlfriend. I can't get a hold of him. If he's with his new girlfriend, there could be a good explanation for that. A different kind of breaststroke, if you know what I mean. Virginia winked. Ew. She was clearly trying to cheer me up, but I do not need that visual. Never underestimate the male libido. That's my brother you're talking about. And you know perfectly well he's a scamp. Scamp? Who even said stuff like that? You use the strangest words, Virginia shrugged. Lady and the Tramp was one of my favorite movies as a kid. That explains a lot. Wanna guess what my second favorite movie was? Not really. I knew she'd tell me anyway. Dirty Dancing. She wiggled her eyebrows suggestively and fanned her face. Patrick Swayze, my oh my. I couldn't help but laugh. How old are you anyway? Virginia grinned, unrepentant. We didn't have cable as a kid. Just a busted old tube TV and DVD player. Remember those? All I had were my mom's favorites and what we could borrow from the library. Long since done cleaning the floor, Virginia picked up her tray and swayed her hips as she headed back out to the tables. What was that all about? Silas asked as he slid into a seat at the bar. Heat lit my cheeks, but I tried to stay nonchalant even as I was drawn to his presence. I wiped down the counter as I glanced up at him from beneath my lashes. Silas wasn't totally alone tonight. A white essence perched on his shoulder. The demon, shaped like a bird with a long, curved beak, but with a prehensile tail that curled around Silas's back and twitched across his opposite shoulder, eyed me back. Virginia was just trying to cheer me up. Set break? What can I get you? I asked without pausing, trying to change the subject before I had to tell the story all over again. No need to scare him away and ruin the night. Just a nice water tonight. I lifted an eyebrow in disbelief. Usually Silas was all about the blood and sand. I'd had to learn to make them special, just for him. The demon puffed its chest and blinked at me. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was trying to take the credit. I know, I know. I'm on a detox for a bit, trying to get my head on straight. Stay present, know what I mean? Not really. I should probably pay attention to all that health stuff that Ezra was always going on about, but I didn't. However, this demon seemed to be one of the more benevolent creatures if it had influenced Silas away from vice and toward a more balanced lifestyle. Maybe. He never really knew with any of them. You look like you could use one, though. I sighed. More like three, but I'll refrain for now. I shot Silas a half-hearted smile as Virginia arrived with another order. She tell you about Ezra? She asked. Everyone knew my brother. He'd become a regular ever since I started working at the Trident. No, what happened? He has a new girlfriend. That was not what I said, and you know it. I lifted the shaker over my shoulder and shook it back and forth as if the innocuous object had personally offended me. He'll call you back. He's in love. Virginia teased before whisking the finished drinks away to her table. Silas gazed at me with a question in his eyes, requesting information. Resigned, I told him the story. I'm worried, I finished. He never fails to return my phone calls. Silas frowned as the demon on his shoulder leaned in toward his ear. I'd always thought it a little odd that the demon seemed to speak to their hosts, and yet no one but me could actually hear the words they said. This one encouraged Silas toward comfort and compassion. I sensed a push toward something Silas had learned earlier that day, something that had given him an idea. Maybe the idea that had allowed a benevolent demon to gain sway? Virginia's probably right, Silas said, drawing my attention to his soulful brown eyes. I'd always loved his eyes. I quickly looked away. Maybe. He probably cuddled up with his lady during the storm. If I had a lady and the opportunity, it's what I would do. I snorted. Oh, yeah. Of course. It's not like we get this kind of weather all the time. We have to take advantage when we can. A crooked smile and a twinkle in those caramel eyes drew me in, 
but I couldn't hold his gaze. In fact, he continued, not seeming to notice my discomfort. Graham's told me today there hasn't been a storm like this in 50 years. Last time it happened, all sorts of strange stuff went down. Like what? Like glowing waves, for one. They lasted three weeks, or so she said. Like red tide? I scoffed. That's not entirely uncommon. Yeah, except there was no algae in the water. Nothing red during the day, just glowing at night. Scientists couldn't explain it. Another customer slid up next to Silas and ordered a pineapple express. Silas shot the guy an annoyed glare, but I used the interruption to consider his words while I mixed the drink. It couldn't be a coincidence, right? The ocean spirit possessing people, trying to draw Gabby into the water, trying to drown that poor woman. Then the storm. Ezra's disappearance. Did your grandma say anything about people disappearing around that time? I asked, trying to keep my voice nonchalant. An uptick or in drownings or anything? No, not really. I mean, I only called to check on her, make sure the roof wasn't leaking or anything. When With Gramps long gone and my dad out of town, I'm the only one around. We didn't talk very long. I wonder if it'll happen tonight, I mused. A niggling thought at the back of my mind had me glancing over my shoulder to make sure there weren't any demons trying to latch on. I liked to maintain my independence, thank you very much. But there were no cloudy apparitions hanging around except the one on Silas's shoulder. Silas leaned his head to the side with a shy but hopeful smile. I'll go with you after closing if you want to check it out. I wiped up the circle of water beneath Silas's now empty glass and put it in the bus bin that was overflowing with glassware. I was going to have to get after Fergus to pay more attention to my bu to bussing my station. The barback idolized Ty, wanted to learn all the fancy shaker flips and tricks, but left me stranded in the meantime. Yeah, I said, returning my attention to Silas. I I'd like that. My trombonist's eyes lit up. Yeah? I nodded. Great. I have my car so we can head to the Overlook after you lock up. If they really glow like Graham said, it'll be a beautiful sight. She said after all these years, she still remembers the draw the ocean had for those three weeks. It never left her, which is why she never left Laguna Beach. Couldn't stand the thought of deserting her ocean. Her words. She thought she was being funny. You know, desert and ocean. Got it. I smiled. Silas pushed his fedora back on his head. I had better get back on stage. The guys are already waiting. You know, that hat makes you look like a cheesy noir detective or something. <laughs> Why do you think I wear it? He grinned and tugged on the brim. See you after. Too flamboyant, I thought again, but still cute. That's the end of chapter nine. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are enjoying the story, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and click the little bell so you get notified when the next chapter comes out. Until next time, see you later.